You know what? It's about time that Apple's caught off to the PC world. Welcome to the M.2 revolution. Is that not what this is? This is an, this is an M.2 MacBook, right? Something like that. That's, that's what it is? If only. No, this is the M2 MacBook Pro, which is in fact identical to the M1 MacBook Pro. You'll note that these are very similar on the back. So similar, in fact, that um, it's tough to actually tell. But at least this one does say with M1 chip over here. And this one says just 13 inch MacBook Pro, which could mean anything. Thank you, Apple, for going back to the stupid. <clears throat> Please give them model numbers. Maybe you can even just put like a year there. M2 isn't isn't on here at all, I don't think. Like let's let's take a look at this. 10C GPU. So that I guess tells you that it's an M2, but M2 I don't think is even like you wouldn't even find M2 on here. That's cool. Thank you, Apple. As you may or may not know, this is in fact the exact same chassis as the other MacBook Pro. The 13-inch MacBook Pro, I should say. This is the 13-inch MacBook Pro M1 or M2. God. It's already Apple, I thought we'd been over this. This is supposed to just come right off. Ugh. All right. And in the box, we just have a Type-C cable, not MagSafe. Why would it be MagSafe? And a, um, what is this? This is, this smells like, this all smells kind of musty. Yeah, it smells old. It smells like my aunt's car. 67 watt charger. They should just all begin at this point. Gallium nitride. But much like the chassis, I'm sure they have plenty of these that they still need to sell. And that's kind of the thing. This has, shut up you. This has the uh, good old low profile. <laughs> anyway, it's got the good old low profile key switches. It's got the good old touch bar. It's got the good old touch ID sensor right there. It does have an escape key, thankfully, like the most up-to-date 13 inch MacBook Pros do. I mean, what else is there to say about it? Physically, like it is identical to this one. Let's get this out of the box here. I could probably shuffle these and you wouldn't know the difference. Yeah, look at this. It is literally the same machine. This one's dead. Uh, so I will use the new charger to charge it up. Okay, now we got that charging and it turned on immediately. Thank you, Apple. So we got two USB type C's on the side here. These are Thunderbolt. I believe they're both Thunderbolt on the MacBook Pro. There are no other ones over here. Just a uh, combo headphone microphone jack here. You need to use one of these up for charging, which is a bummer because that means that when you're charging or docked, you only have a single Thunderbolt port to use, which is kind of why I don't understand why this particular form factor even exists anymore, other than Apple just has a bunch of them that they need to sell. Yeah, some people are religious about the touch bar. They really love the touch bar. And I, I like the concept of the touch bar, but not at the expense of the F keys. Give me the 14 inch here with the F keys. Maybe, maybe we could just take this and put it up here. Best of both worlds. But we all know that that's not why Apple did that. Which is the same reason they haven't bothered changing the lightning connector on iPhones, despite the fact that they've changed over to type C for literally everything else. They just need to sell through. There's really no putting it off any further. I need to get into this thing and show you the software experience. Maybe run a benchmark or two. But first I need to talk to you about dbrand. dbrand wants us to talk about the Galaxy S22 Ultra cases that they didn't send us for the video on the M2 MacBook. They didn't even send it to us? Uh, anyway, the S22 Ultra cases are now available from, from dbrand. It's not the Atomic Edition, whatever that is. As of today, they're selling the original grip case for the S22 Ultra. Same one I use on my, oh. Same one I used to use on my phone. I mean, for the S22 Ultra, come on. You're not gonna use MagSafe for that, right? I do like the grip case. It's nicer feeling in the hand than this is. It's way more grippy. Like this is, this is slick. Whoa. Dbrand, do this with your phone and see what happens. If it shoots out of your hand, then uh, you need to get a grip. <laughs> Check it out at the link below. Yeah, I'm already getting them mixed up. My questions are, is the display the same? Are the speakers the same? Is the microphone and or webcam the same? So far, it looks like the old screen, maybe brighter. Let's turn off True Tone and automatically adjust brightness. 
Let's uh, drop the brightness down and bring it back up just so, you know, we're, we're, we're in good shape. Okay, so it looks like we did get an eight gigabyte of RAM model, which is not great. It's the base model. But we do have 512 gigs of storage, which is a good thing because I'm not sure if you've seen yet, but um, the 256 gig base model actually runs like half the speed in terms of storage performance as the 512. This is a result of Apple no longer using 128 gigs chips as they do on the original M1 MacBook Pro. Now they use 256 gig chips, which means that there are fewer channels available to the Flash controller and Flash cannot perform multiple actions simultaneously. It has to kind of take it one at a time. We're looking at much worse performance in terms of uh, memory or storage. Exactly what you want to see out of an upgraded, uh, upgraded SKU. So if you buy one of these, make sure that you get the 512 gig of storage unless you really don't care about how fast your computer is, which is strange. In that case, you should probably just get the MacBook Air or buy from the um, refurbished shop or instead, or get a Chromebook, I don't care. So the displays are basically the same. I think they're exactly the same. Is the webcam any different? I think it's literally the same. Yeah, 720p FaceTime HD camera. So it's exactly the same camera as well. I don't know if the microphone sounds any different. Um, let me just move them apart so, and address them one by one so that you can actually hear what the microphone sounds like in each individual case. I'm gonna move over here now. This is what the microphone sounds like on the new one. So if it sounds any better, then Apple actually did upgrade the array. If not, then Apple didn't, which I don't expect they did, but you never know. And maybe there's maybe there's better signal processing in the M2. You, you never know. Um, probably not though. And it's disappointing, right? Like I would have preferred to have some kind of anything new other than just the CPU. Let's listen to some Crab Rave. Please. Stop it. Ads are the worst. You know what's not the worst? The new short circuit hoodie. The new short circuit hoodie, yes. Oh, it's got like blue on the inside. That's kind of neat. Unmute. All right. It's pretty much the same. Like if I were to load up Crab Rave on the 14 inch here, This sounds a lot better. There's a lot more oomph to it. I mean, obviously it's not great either because it's got a very V-shaped curve. The 16 inch is way, way superior or, well, yeah. It sounds better in either way. Uh, the, they didn't upgrade the, the sound in this at all. Now, that being said, this used to be kind of a benchmark in terms of audio quality for laptop speakers, but things have changed a lot since Apple first improved those sound drivers. Now we have this and the thing about this, it's not even appreciably larger in terms of its footprint. It is thicker, but then you have to think about what you're getting in this thicker form factor. Like how would Apple make this better for me? The TLDR is this is a much nicer looking and feeling machine. That being said, it's a fair bit more expensive. Like the base model for this is like $12.99 if I'm not mistaken. So for an extra 700 bucks, you get honestly quite a bit more computer. I don't know why this exists in a world where the M2 MacBook Air exists. Now, that being said, the M2 MacBook Air isn't shipping yet, as far as I know. The M1 was more or less just as fast on the Air as with the Pro, unless you hit it with a sustained workload that you know would require some kind of cooling. You could theoretically cool the MacBook Air if you needed to. I don't know why this exists, except to pander to people who like the touch bar and to push more of these chassis out the door. I like my function keys. Like I can do a lot more in terms of interacting with the computer at a given point in time with this function row than I can with this. Now, that being said, the things that I can do with this can be more flexible. I can adjust the display brightness just like that. Okay, Mr. Horst. Ooh. First of all, which one's which? Uh, uh, Wait, they're the same model number? They're both A2338. A That's hilarious. What? No! Well, nah. Okay, I, I know because uh, just looking at the dock. Well, yes. It's this one. Yes, I should have turned the displays off. 
What is this machine for? So the reviews have been out from uh, real publications, and oh, real? Oh, oh. <laughs> just kidding. It seems like the best angle they can come up with is you want uh, the most amount of power with the most amount of battery life. Okay, but the new Air though. Well, I don't think the battery's gonna be as robust. We're doing a project out in the Serengeti and we don't wanna use the Jackery, <laughs> I guess. Make sure it's charged before you leave. Literally the only difference is the SOC. I think it's this, it's either you want a long battery life or you truly love the touch bar, which I would not discredit anyone for because I found myself surprised at how much I liked the touch bar when I used it. Yeah, no, well, I mean, the touch bar is fine. I just mm -hmm. don't want to lose my function keys. So. But they're function keys. Yeah, but did you see how long it took you to get them yes, out? Yes, I know why I understand. Well, no, you can do this. Mm -mm. Yeah, you can, yeah, okay, so that's faster. But if I wanted to, like, say quickly, mute my mic, it's done. Why does it exist? Thank you for updating it. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. Now that that interruption is over, we will do a drag race of Cinebench. And again, Cinebench isn't the be all end all of benchmarks, especially on Apple, but between apples to apples, it should be a pretty decent comparison. So let's just go ahead and hit all of them now. Oh, yeah. oh well, the, the M2 does seem to be working a fair bit faster than the M1. And this is just on the CPU test. They have the same number of cores. Uh, this is an M1 Max. So it's, it's, it's got two more cores anyway for the CPU. So it's gonna be a little bit faster. But uh, yeah, this is well out ahead of what the M1 is doing here. And I started them all off at the same time. We'll see what the final score looks like. 12.365 on the M1 Max. Oh no, this is running a, oh no. This is running a throttle test. Why would it be doing that? I didn't set it up at all. Ugh, fine. I'll start this over. The M1 was 7841 points. The M2 is 8737. So almost a thousand, so 900-ish points. That's not nothing. So I'm looking forward to the uh, <laughs> M2 Pro and M2 Max. That's what I'm looking forward to. I don't see any reason why you should pick up this unless you are absolutely married to the touch bar and you want the absolute best touch bar equipped Mac you can get because the, the advantages to this are just so many. Like this is, M this is M1 Max, just to be clear. This is M1 Max, but they both have this, like M1 Pro and M1 Max both have the same CPU core arrangement. And that was the performance difference. They have the same actual like clock speeds and everything. So now I, I don't see how this is worth $1,200 or $1,300, sorry, $1,299. When you can get a MacBook Air. Now, obviously you can't get the MacBook Air today, but I wouldn't buy this today instead of the MacBook Air if I needed something in this class. If I didn't need something in that class and I needed something more powerful, I would get this. Bottom line. That's gonna do it for this short circuit. Uh, make sure you get subscribed and uh, maybe go check out our previous M1 MacBook Pro review or not review, but unboxing overview kind of thing. Uh, I did take that one apart. I said I was gonna take this one apart, but quite frankly, I don't think it's worth it.